On today's episode of PJ and the Beer, we're gonna take a look at a pedal. But before we dive into that, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel, click on the notification bell. Your interaction with us helps us interact with great people in the industry. In this case, we went back to Zounds again, and we got in the Line 6 HX1. And right. the Beard's gonna tell you a little bit about how we're gonna approach this and... Yeah, so this is the first Line 6 pedal we've done. A video on. <laughs> right, we've done a video on it. I do have a Line 6 M5 that I picked up a little while ago after, for you fish fans after watching the tray uh, rig rundown. He has two on his rig. I was like, well, if he has two, I should have. I get one. I should have <laughs> one. But, um, so I had that. But we, I don't think either one of us have ever been sucked into the whole Helix craze thing right. that's been going on, right? So we don't right. run direct and we don't. So we've kind of stayed away from it. This piqued our entrance because it's like, <clears throat> I guess what we're used to, it's one pedal, one effect, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's just that that one pedal has a whole bunch of effects in it, but you use them one at a time. So when I say one effect, uh, you have all kinds of flangers, chorus pedals, rotary pedals, envelope filters, phasers, compressors, delays, delays, reverbs, wahs, drives, drives, <laughs> you have all of these things packed into one pedal, but you only use one at a time. So and, and line six is kind of thought of everything. They have MIDI in and MIDI out on it. So you can set up MIDI. You can, you can save your presets. You know, you can find your favorite ones. Put them in the preset, switch them with the MIDI. Um, but you know, I was thinking about it. Like for us, this pedal's like, hey, like I don't want to add a flanger and a, you know, I don't. There's, there's five pedals I don't want to add to my board, but I might want every once in a while. This is a great pedal to put there. And for guys that are doing that, maybe aren't running MIDI cables and doing, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think it's a. I think it speaks to. In some ways, it might speak to a different audience than some of the other stuff does. And then in some ways, it probably speaks to those people too, you know, because mm -hmm. it's very for more familiar uh, form factor and stuff like that. You can do, if you wanted to do it, you can do it. Yeah. And with each an effect, there's a lot of different parameters that you can right. manipulate you can within tweak. the effect. Yeah. Uh, you have an effects loop on the back, so you can stick pedals in and then put the pedals in the effects loop before the effect or after the effect. Mm -hmm. So you might have a filter before drive in one setting, and then you might have something after mm -hmm. drive or Leslie after the drive in another setting. So, like, the sky's the limit. You can really dive into this. Tonight, mm -hmm. what we want to do is just... We picked out a bunch of different ones, kind of tweaked them a little bit, see how we like it, played some clips. And there's a few things we'll show you along the way. Uh, we're not gonna jump into the MIDI. We're not gonna jump into the effects loop. And we're probably, I mean, you can even, we were watching earlier, you can even like set up the impedance level right. of the input that's coming into the pedal. Like you can. Which means you could manipulate your, your signal chain and not have a fuzz first. You can have it somewhere else because you can, all kinds of things. You can do crazy stuff. Yeah. So let's jump right into it. Uh, first, your first choice. Yeah, first choice. Uh, we went with one of our series, and I jumped on the tremolo, and I selected the bias trim, and I played the silver sky, which actually is not on my lap. It's back there. Trust me, you've seen it hundreds of times. Was the bias times. or the optical? I changed to the bias. Oh, did you? Okay. Yes, I changed. Didn't he wasn't know. looking. I changed it. I, I actually could turn knobs and change something. Can you believe it? But I, I did the uh, the bias trim on the silver sky in position four, and um, I, 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 I I titled this one not stairway. So just know it's not stairway. clip i also went one of our series i went back to that leslie sound series one of my favorite series and dialed up a leslie 122 and then used it's the flux button right mm -hmm. um and i thought real quick we're going to show you how that happens before we play the clip so right now it's set for optical trim because well that's what i thought pat 
played in the last. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to change, if you push down the menu button and hold it in turn, it will get you to like all the different things. So if I push this down and hold it and turn there, reverb, delay, mod, EQ, I'm just gonna go to mod. So once we're in mod, I can just press it and now I'm in the list. And so I can zoom through that list until I get to uh, there's some choruses and some other stuff. All right, 122 rotary. And so now I'm on 122 rotary and you can see you have like your three knobs up here. These knobs always change the parameters. Uh, you have two arrow keys on either side. So I can go to more parameters. Let it, you go through all the different parameters. Um, notice there's a slow speed and a fast speed and go, well, how do you change? And so in the HX1, which is not in the other Line 6 pedals, they have something called the flux mm -hmm. button. Mm -hmm. And so if I push the flux button, you saw that light up and then you saw this line come across telling me I was in that, that part of the flux. If I hit it again, it goes back down. So notice if I change speed here, I can go between slow and fast, slow and fast, right? Well, since I'm in the flux setting with all the way down, I'm gonna hold that, set that, go to the flux all the way up, and now you see that filled in because it is in the fast setting. So that flux is changing between fast mm -hmm. and slow. Uh, real quick, just so you know, if I jump over a little bit, on time, and, oh my gosh, keep bumping that. The editor's gonna get it mad at you. <laughs> right. So that's how long it takes for it to come on. So you can make it really long. That's only a second right now. I can jack it up to like six seconds, really make it slow ramp. I can change the curve of the ramp so it's real fast or it comes in slow and exponentially goes up at the end. I can change the off time. I can change the off curve. So you can make the on time totally off. So the second you hit it, it flips over. Mm -hmm. Same with the off time, or you can make it last a really long time if you want like a nice slow ramp. Um, and I think there's also a ramp setting in that one too. But anyway, one last thing. Uh, since our pedal is up here, <laughs> and I didn't want to take my tie-dye Crocs up there and hit it. We're both we're both crocking tonight, by the way. <laughs> we try not to admit to that. Because if you ain't crocking, you ain't rocking. Right. Um, so I used the, the Mission EP1 and just plugged it in, and now it took over controlling the flux. Toe was fast, heel was slow, threw that on the floor and I was able to change speed. So here's the Leslie 122 with that Leslie sound hook. <laughs> For my next clip, we never did an official series of it, but uh, although I was born in the late 60s, I like to say I'm a child of the 80s when it comes to guitar, so I'm never shy away from a chorus. And this has a plethora of choruses on it, but I landed on the Trinity Chorus, which I'm assuming is a you know a tri-chorus, mm -hmm. and I grabbed uh, the Beard Swamp Ash Special, which we uh, recently did. A uh, comparison to another Swamp Ash SE it has its own uh, episode out. Check it out. It's a really great guitar. I played it in the neck position with the pickups split to get that nice uh, stratty uh, sound, if you will. And I had the DLS uh, effects uh, echo tour through the Tyler JT22, and this is what it sounded like. <laughs>
For the third clip, um, I'm just going to jump to something I did later in the night because after Pat used the uh, Swamp Ash special, I was like, Pass it over. <laughs> I'll just pl keep that. And honestly, ended up in the neck pickup, the you know, single, single position with this one as well. It's just a great sounding guitar. Uh, and because I had a great clean sounding guitar, I threw it on the Octa Reverb setting, um, which is a weird octave reverb. And when you hear some of the low notes, it sounds like you got some like Igorian monk or whatever <laughs> like, yeah, that's behind right. you. That's is that the right, right. terminology right. behind you singing so pretty cool stuff it sounds like this All right, for my next clip, um, I, I wanted to try something different. And honestly, we were just toggling through some of the things. And I landed on a, a poly pitch, uh, which really interesting sound. Uh, I decided to grab uh, the Beards uh, Les Paul that's been uh, lovingly uh, done over by David Barber. And I played that. And of course, I always had the Echo Tour and I played through the Tyler. And I, I played something that, you know, maybe sounded a little more 12 string or something that was capoed. It's a really interesting uh, sound, and that's what I did. For my next clip, I grabbed the Michael Dolan custom guitar. We do have a video out on this. This is a gear story video, cool story behind it. Um, wanted to go into one of other series, Shakedown Sound series, which dealt with envelope filters. Uh, I landed on the Ottawa setting. There's a whole bunch of them in there. But I landed on the Ottawa, tweaked it a little bit, uh, played a little clip for the first time in, you know, living memory. <laughs> my wife and I went to the movies this weekend. Can you guess what movie we saw? All right, coming out of that, I just want to tell you 
I did not shoot the deputy. I'm just saying I didn't do it. Either. I don't know who did. Somebody did, but it wasn't me. Uh, so I went and grabbed the uh, Silver Sky. And uh, when we were going through the uh, HX1, uh, we found the batch of uh, Wawa pedals. And we used the uh, the Mission. Was that the EP1? Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, we used the Mission EP1 in a seated position, which is a little awkward. Uh, and also wearing Crocs, so you didn't get to see those. But I picked the throaty. Um, some of them you can figure out which one they're emulating. This was called Throaty. I'm not sure which one they're emulating. I played this and a, a lot of wankery ensued. So one of the cool things about a pedal like this is you can get out of your comfort zone a little bit and maybe explore effects that you really don't explore. Right. Like on a normal day, like ones that I don't typically use or wouldn't typically use. I could add it to my rig. I could have it there. I could explore it, play around with it a little bit. And so in, in, in that spirit, I went to the compressors and started playing around with some of those. I landed on the blue comp. Uh, again, we're not really sure. Uh, I've paid so little attention to compressors, I can't tell you which one that's modeled after. But what I do like is when you play something funky, it brings up all the single notes to match the chords and just kind of squishes everything together real nice. It sounds like this on a 2014 American Strap. <laughs> the clips we have for you tonight. Hey, uh, how about some final thoughts? My personal final thoughts on this pedal is I took a shallow dive into a very deep yes. tool. Um, really came and twisted knobs for the first time and didn't want to twist too many because there are so many parameters to some of these things. Tried to go with some effects that we're familiar with. Uh, I, 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 some of the effects I dialed up I thought sounded good. I, I like that um, tremolo that I found. There is a lot of power under that hood there. And I'm sure with the right amount of tweaking to match your guitar, your rig, you can find all kinds of things. They even talked about using it for desktop recording in some of the things we looked at. I think it's a very versatile pedal. Um, I think you can get a lot out of it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just a little too lazy and just go pick some analog thing off the shelf over here and turn a couple knobs and, and here we are. But uh, I think it would be a, an interesting thing to dive into, figure out which applications you want to use it on. Uh, but you know, Line 6 stuff is is really well done uh, for sure. I think they've they've captured a lot of uh, traditional sounds in there. They've, they've, they've emulated a lot of gear that you're familiar with. Um, it was fun to just stuff off camera, just go through all the drives, just click to the next one and see what it sounded like. I think you'd have fun with this pedal for sure. It might yeah. it might spark some creativity, uh, maybe even some songwriting ideas, things like that. It's it's great. It's got a lot of power um, a little bit over my head at times just because, frankly, I'm lazy. <laughs> but I think it's a well done. It's a well done pedal for sure. It's interesting. I said I have the, the M5 on my board. And for a short while, we had we were borrowing an air step, mm -hmm. and I had a MIDI cable hooked into it. And I think I had three settings. I had a phaser, like a, a big, um, a big delay, like a big shimmer mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. delay, not, like an not what we did, yeah, yeah, like an ambient thing. And there might have been something else, maybe a big reverb. I don't know. I lost the MIDI thing. <laughs> 
found the phaser I was using, and it's been a one-trick pony ever since. The phaser sounds amazing on it, by the way. The phaser on it sounds really good. I imagine the sounds in here are very similar to probably the sounds in those old those old pedals updated a little bit, whatever. I like a pedal with three knobs. I used to have a rule. If it had more than three knobs, mm -hmm. I didn't want it. And when you click and get in, you got your three knob parameter knobs there. And then I found the little arrow buttons that opened up a whole new world of, of, of things. And then there's settings and all kinds of sub menus and stuff. Uh, but even with all that, I think it's really, it, it didn't take long to start. It didn't take long to figure out how to navigate it. Mm -hmm. It didn't take long to figure out how to yeah. tweak it. Um, I think if you had a couple sounds, if, I, if there's a couple things I wanted to get into, you know, and then we haven't talked about saving presets and how to get right. through the presets, but that I, I guarantee that's not hard. I just want to interject something here real quick. It's 249 on sounds right now on sale. So that is a lot of power, a lot of options for 249 right. that you might pay that for a single boutique style pedal that does the one thing. I just want to throw that in there as you were talking about right. what you can do with it. So, I mean, set it at the end of your pedal board to put a, a loop in your pedal, like however you want to use there's it. There's a looper in there too. Right, and there's a looper in there as well, yeah. <laughs> but I meant to use the effects loop on it yeah. where you can put other pedals in your board. So much power, so much versatility on it. Um, so at the end of the night, this was really our first kind of dive yeah. into it. At the end of the night, I think we recorded six sounds that I thought were fun. The three I did were fun. Uh, I would love to click on that octave setting that I did and play that <laughs> next next time we're playing live and throw that in just to see the, the looks behind right. the other side of the stage. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, good stuff. You know, check it out. Line 6 HX1. If you've never done, dipped your toes into the Line 6 stuff, like us, this was not intimidating to start off. Right, right. And so it might be a good place to start if you want to get into that ecosystem and it might be a good place to start if you've been avoiding that ecosystem, but you do want a nice multi-effect pedal at the end of your board that doesn't take up too much room and gives you a lot of power. So that was good. It's a good summary. We always take a moment and say, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting the subscribe button, click the notification bell. Anytime you interact with the channel, that's what allows us to interact with cool people like Zounds, who sent us this pedal so we could share it with you. So that really helps out. And with that, I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear.